What's up guys, today we've got a great question from one of our friends. He's 25 years old, he's made a great many of accomplishments in his life. He's an award-winning athlete, he's won a scholarship to college, and now he's in a place where he's looking for spiritual enlightenment. And he's been reading books of men like Eckhart Tolle and exploring this idea that perhaps I should set aside the ego because there's more to life than these worldly accomplishments. The things that I've been able to achieve with regard to school and sports no longer gratify me. They no longer bring me pleasure because they're all ego-seeking goals. And maybe I'd be better off setting aside goals because it's all icky ego stuff. Or so he's been led to believe. Or so you've been led to believe. Because you've been reading the books of and listening to the lectures of gentlemen like Eckhart Tolle, who I happen to respect greatly, and I've listened to all of his audios, and I've read all of his books, and I happen to think that he has an incredible uh, understanding of spirituality. But at the same time, I think you're only hearing what he's hear saying with one ear. There is a second half of the story. And for Eckhart Tolle to have reached you with his message means that he must have some fucking goals. The dude's been on Oprah. You don't get on Oprah by letting the spirit carry you because you have no goals, because goals are evil and they're of, the, they're of carnal desire. Passion and instinct, passion and sexuality have no room in higher consciousness and spirituality. Or so you would believe if you only hear what the man is saying. You gotta look also don't ignore what you see because you hear beautiful language, because you hear beautiful things. I often tell you, look with your eyes before you judge. Look at someone's body. Look at Eckhart Tolle. He writes books that are New York Times bestsellers. He travels the world to give you a, mes a message about not achieving goals because it's all ego. He's an egomaniac. I'm an egomaniac. Jesus was an egomaniac. You need the ego because the ego gives you the sword and the shield to approach life with. It is a powerful manifestation of, it's a powerful fruit of a balanced intuition, balls, sexuality, and balanced passion. Communion, community, love, carnal desire and passion. You gotta understand that the neocortex, the new part of our brain, the one that gives us this idea that perhaps there is a spiritual world and it allows us to analyze and be intelligent and to consider the afterlife simply because we have the ability to look in the past and see into the future. It's a double-edged sword, mind you. We begin to think that it's somehow better than our passion and our, and our carnal, our sexual desire, because those things are ego, right? Passion, passion, passion agitates the body. It makes you anxious, right? Because you want to achieve something because I'm so fucking passionate about it. And don't get me started in our third and, and, and really our first, our, our most base form of consciousness. If I were to go back, I, you know, I, I mentioned the neocortex is that one, that spiritual one, that one that the ego might want to get attached to and say that I'm going to transcend the carnal desires and the passions of the body. But we also have the mammalian brain. That's of the heart. It's an older brain than our Eckhart Tolle brain, than our spiritual floating on clouds woo-woo brain. I have no desires. I'm going to sit here and write best-selling books and appear on Oprah. It's all bullshit. We're all bullshitters. You gotta see through the bullshit. Eckhart Tolle, bless his heart. I love him. Bullshit. Okay? I'm a bullshitter. Jesus was a bullshitter. We use these tools to reach people so that the fruits of our passion, the fruits of our understanding, the fruits of our intuition might reach the lives of others. 
You've got the understanding of the heart, which is oneness, community, communication, love, passion. And you've also got the understanding of the reptilian brain found in the body with our intuition, our sexuality. You know, they say that reptiles don't feel love. They just, they, they, it's all about safety, survival, and sex for them. Well, we have that in us too. In fact, that's our oldest brain. It's completely egotistical, full of passion, unbridled passion and foolishness, foolhardy, foolhardedness to think that we can somehow live a balanced life on earth and you've chosen to live here, you've got to eat and shit, that somehow we can transcend and become spiritual and have no passions and ignore our sexual desire and intuition. I, I say, I speak like this because that's how Eckhart Tolle talks. I'm gonna put it this way. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be egotistical with you for a moment. I'm gonna share my idea about how this whole thing works. Right, because that's all we all are. Like I said, we're, we've all got our own brand of bullshit. Eckhart Tolle's brand of bullshit is to sit down and just meditate and write best-selling books. Don't forget, mine, to get inside your body, feel your body, recognize, appreciate your sexuality, breathe deeply, open up the passion that resides in you, and express everything that is bubbling up inside your body in such a way that we empower, inspire, embolden, and support everyone in our world balance our passion with intelligence and intuition. And you know what the game looks like when you play that way? Because Eckhart Tolle will tell you that if you play his game, it's always about the deathbed. It's always about when we're gonna die, because we all fucking die. And guess what? Whatever you accomplish or don't accomplish, mainly the way you feel, at the moment of your death, there's a good chance you're gonna carry that with you in the afterlife or wherever you go, right? That energy that animates us doesn't disappear when, we, when our body dies, right? It, it sort of makes its way into the higher consciousness or the collective consciousness. Do you wanna carry frustration for not accomplishing those goals, those passions, not fulfilling those desires in a balanced way, they've got to be balanced, when you die and say, but I was a nice guy, and smile off, knowing that you really didn't do shit. Or, and here's my invitation, here's the way I'd like to see it done, here's the way our warrior ancestors would move forward, carrying the phrase, today's a good day to die, boys. I want to be spent. I'm going to give all of my passion room to be expressed. I'm going to use all of my sexual energy to fuel my journey towards fulfilling goals. I'm going to set lofty goals and I'm going to kill myself every day to achieve them. The goals will be of the heart, passion, meaning my family, my work, my deep desire to share the messages and the words and the, the feelings in my body with those who can receive it. I have big goals about this. Expressing my sexuality, I want to scream, I want to yell, I want to trust my gut when it tells me something. I want to enjoy sex with my wife till I die, my last day. I want to fuck her like I did when I was 16. All of my body, all of my energy, that's why I exercise. I want to give it all to the day I die. And I want to use all that passion and all that animal, carnal, sexual energy 
to move myself in the world in such a way that I achieve big goals. Because when I die, I'm leaving a stamp. I'm leaving ripples. Ripples that are so far reaching that on the outer edges they don't even know where their inspiration came from. And my soul will smile. I want to go out with a bang. And that means I'm going to infuse ego, passion, and balls, sexuality, in everything I do. I'm going to play the game really fucking hard. But, there's a big but. Very important but. A balanced butt, right? Not like one cheek's the same size as the other. But a butt that makes the yin perfect because of the yan. The Eckerd Tolle perfect because of the Elliot Hulse. The Zorba perfect because of the Buddha. But it's all a fucking game, dude. Who cares? It has no meaning. There's significance, a tremendous amount of significance to it. Look around. Look at a fucking leaf. I'm looking at trees right now. Look at the leaf. Look at all the intricacy associated with the goal that that acorn had to make these fucking leaves. What about a tree that bears fruit? That seed dropped in the soil and all the nourishment associated with the mother earth and the sun beating down with all of its solar energy to bring forth that fruit and that tree, its desire, its ego to want to branch out and create fruit that the tree can't even eat. The ripples of the tree's ego desire to produce that fruit lives on in me. Because when I bite it, I'm infused with nourishment that fuels my passion, that stimulates my sexuality, that sharpens my mind so that I, like the tree, can bear fruit as well. My friend, don't sit and meditate. Don't sit and wait for life to go by while you smile at the clouds. Do something worthy, produce fruit. You use meditation, and you use objectivity, and you use detachment, and you use deep breathing so that you can have the energy to move forward with your ego gratification. We need more egomaniacs. We need more balanced egomaniacs. Don't let the game carry you away. Don't get carried away with goal achievement. In that, you don't bring the heart, meaning, passion, and also the golden rule. We're brothers and sisters. If you stomp on someone's face and are unjust to any one of your brothers on your way to ego gratification, on goal achieving, you're imbalanced. Try again. You're going about it the wrong way. If you suppress your sexuality, if you ignore your gut, you will not have the deep primordial instinctual, animal, holy ghost power that has gotten us to where we are as a race of human beings. Go set some goals, kill yourself achieving them, and smile when you let it go. Done.